Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I come to you fresh faced, bare skin, because I'm going to attempt to do a quick get ready with me and story time of the worst international flight I ever went on. This will have to be fast because I'm getting ready to go to lunch with my husband and I don't have a lot of time, but I figure let me get ready with you guys and I will tell you about this flight I had and uh, you know now that I think about it it really wasn't even the worst flight but it was the most recent worst flight I'm using the Shiseido eyelash curler this is the new holiday edition gold one that I got during the recent Sephora sale also as I'm filming this they have the Sephora gifts for all event where you get another chance to use 20% off so I just have my skincare on and I'm just curling my lashes I posted recently a shopping vlog like luxury duty-free shopping on the Emirates flight from JFK to Dubai. They had an onboard shopping catalog and you could buy, you know, Hermes and Cartier fragrances. It was a 15 hour flight. I figured, let me take you guys along with me to go luxury duty-free shopping. I ended up buying some stuff. The flight attendants go around and they take your order and then you get it at the end of the plane ride. I'm just putting lip balm. This is the Laneige lip sleeping mask. This is the flavor mint cocoa. Can you see? All right, my skin is prepped. I'm just going to use the Merit Great Skin Serum just like to moisturize. But anyway, that was my flight to the Philippines earlier this year. I flew Emirates going there and then I flew Qatar Airlines coming back. And that was the flight that was terrible. It was okay. It just, it was more annoying, but I am trying to be more gracious and patient with other people and like more forgiving because it had to do with another passenger. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I'm wearing the shade 5.75. So I flew Qatar from Manila to Atlanta and it had a layover in Qatar airport. On the first leg from Manila to Dubai, I was fortunately able to upgrade to the Q Suite, which was amazing. It was like a $700 upgrade for what usually are two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 seats. So it was perfect. I had the whole Q Suite. I, I filmed a reel. It was amazing. It was the best sleep I ever had on a plane. I loved it. So then we landed in Qatar and I tried to upgrade again or see if there was an availability to upgrade. There was nothing available. The last available seat in the business Qatar suites was sold because it's like a premium, you know, it kind of is like an auction style. So what I got for 700 from Manila to Dubai, that same seat from Dubai to Atlanta was $5,000. I was like, I will hold on to my $5,000. Thank you. And then for my like foundation, I'm using the Danessa Myrick Yummy Skin, this is in the shade four. So then from Qatar to Atlanta, which is the longer leg, that one was like an almost 15 hour flight or something. That was just a regular economy seat. And I chose the window seat. I always prefer the window seat because I'm like a camel. I don't have to use the bathroom so frequently. I still try to stay hydrated, but you know, I can hold it. Like I can wait to go when the person next to me is going pretty much. And I just prefer the window seat. I like to take videos, whatever. The thing with that airport, the Qatar airport, or it's called Doha Hamad International Airport, which is very similar to many other international airports, especially the ones out of Asia, you know, go through security when you're checking in, but then you have to go through security again at your individual gate. And by security, I mean, you literally have to, they have a separate belt at each separate gate or terminal or whatever. And you have to scan your bag again, your whole carry on, your personal, and they have to scan it again. You can't have any liquids, which is like the whole point. Usually when I fly, I fill up my water bottle. That's what they always tell you to do. You fill up your water bottle right before you go to the gate. It was an overnight layover. It was an early morning flight. I woke up, I got my full water bottle and it was a big water bottle. And I had my coffee, like a full, huge coffee. I had both with me. I'm going through the gate. And then I should have seen it at the gate right before you walk onto the tube to the plane. I saw this girl, another passenger chugging her water. For liquid highlighter, I'm using the Rare Beauty Enlighten shade. So I see a passenger standing at the door to the walkway, chugging her water bottle. And I was like, oh no. And I'm waiting in line. And then the agent tells me I have to empty my water bottle. And I was like, okay. And I'm looking around and normally like in America, American airports, LAX, you know, Atlanta, JFK, they always have a wastebasket, but even the bigger airports will have a liquids disposal basket. This one did not have anything. It didn't have an, any, even a tiny like office waste paper basket. The lady literally was like, 
when I asked if there was a place I can dump it out, she was like, can you just drink it? <laughs> I was like, drink it? I mean, it was, imagine like bigger than this glass of water. And then I had a huge mug of coffee or a cup of coffee. I was like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> so I'm standing there chugging water. Me and this other passenger are standing there chugging our water bottles. And I did it. I'm like, there's water pouring down my face. <laughs> But I did it and I, she said, okay, thank you. And so we both get on board and immediately I was like, okay, cause you know, you still have to wait. You're still waiting to get onto the plane. As soon as I boarded the actual plane, like cross that threshold, I was like, okay, I have to pee before the seats fill up. So I ran and the same girl, she was on the opposite side of the plane. We both like basically went to our, past our seat, dumped our carry-on bag, put our overhead carry-on and then ran to the back of the plane to the bathroom. And there were already people there. So we both were waiting and we were both like, oh my gosh, great. I peed, it was great. By the time I came back to my seat, the plane was filling up. Again, I had a window seat. I had purposely booked a window seat and I think I even paid extra for the window seat. My bag was on my seat by the window. This is the Fenty Cream Blush. It's like a double shade. I like to use both, I'll mix both of these. So I go back to my window seat that had my carry-on bag and my carry-on bag is no longer in the window seat. Instead, it is in the aisle seat and there's a child sitting in the window seat and then a mother sitting in the middle seat. So I'm standing in the aisle and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. That's actually my seat, you know, pointing to the window. And she goes, oh, did you want to sit in the aisle? You can sit in the aisle. And she was so nice. And she really, you know, was offering me this like, benefit, which I guess most people prefer, or more, maybe more people prefer to sit in the aisle so that they have easier access to get in and out. I don't, like I said, and I just was like, oh, no, that's okay. I'll just sit in the window seat. Basically, we're both trying to convince the other person that we're giving up this benefit to the other person. And so she's like, oh, okay. And so she, got her kid to move up. I'm using the Chanel, this is like an oversized bronzer. So yeah, so basically we both were trying to convince the other person that we're allowing the other person to have this like amazing benefit of the aisle seat. So she says, okay. And so she moves and then she gets her kid to move to the middle seat. And then the mother takes the aisle seat. So I sit down in the window seat and then because I am just first and foremost, also a mother, I saw that she was traveling with her daughter. Her daughter looked to be about the same age as my middle son. So maybe like six or seven, you know, like a young kid. And I was like, oh, this poor mother, she's probably traveling with just her kid. You know, she's traveling alone. Let me do my good deed for the day and let her kid sit in the window seat. Obviously the kid wanted to sit in the window seat to look outside the window. So I turned and I said, oh, is that your daughter? Does your daughter want to sit in the window seat? The mother goes, yes, if, if it's okay. And I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, sure. No worries. I'm a mom too. The kid's so happy. So we switch again. Okay. <laughs> so now the daughter goes to the window. I go to the aisle. The mother stays in the middle seat. All is well, right? We buckle up. We board. This is the makeup by Mario Master Mats palette. So we take off and everything's fine. I'm in the aisle seat. It's whatever. I guess there's more leg room or something. And then maybe like 10 minutes into the flight, the mother next to me is kind of like leaning over and talking to a woman in the middle row. So the, it's three by the window and then maybe five or six seats in the middle and then three more on the other side. She's talking over me to a woman seated in the middle seats. Turns out this woman who I was being very gracious because I thought she was traveling alone with her child had her whole family with her. The rest of her family was in the middle. Her husband, she told me was in Atlanta, like he lived in Atlanta and they were visiting, but she was traveling with her two kids, her, I think her mother, and then also her sister and then her sister's child or something like that. So it's a, it's a large group. Like she had other people with her. <laughs> and then she also had a, a son who was around the same age as the girl that was in, sitting in the middle seats. That's fine. Like it's, it's fine. So then she's having a conversation with her son. And I guess, you know, the son also wanted to sit in the window seat. And so the mother was like, you guys can take turns, you know, let your sister sit in the, in the window and then you can come back and sit in the window for the second half of the flight, whatever. I'm like kind of, I'm watching a movie or reading a book. I think at this point, this is just a highlight that I'm trying to finish. It's just a Chanel highlighter. So a few hours into the flight, the mother gets up and switches seats with her son. So now it's her daughter, her young daughter, her young son, and then me 
guarding them. And she went and sat with her sister, mother-in-law, whatever, in the middle seats. So now I'm by myself with these two kids. Not by myself. They're not even next to me. They're like next to us in the middle seat, but like one row in front of us. So kind of like catty corner. And so every so often she leans back to her son to check on them. The son is like asking the mom something. Every time there's a meal at this point or like a snack, the flight attendant is coming down and you know, they take your order, ask what you want. She's asking me, oh, what does my son want? I'm like, I don't know. This isn't my son. His mom is sitting over here. Same with the daughter. So, you know, we had to keep doing this when the daughter or the son would finish their food. You know, they would pass the trash to me. I'm helping them serve their food. I'm helping open up their utensils. And, you know, he'd drop his blanket or he'd drop his headphones and I would like help find it. And I'm just like, oh my God, I don't even have my kids on this trip. I'm traveling alone. <laughs> I went to the Philippines for a funeral. And so, I'm, you know, I was traveling alone. It was a very last minute trip and I don't even have my children. And then I'm taking care of these other kids. <laughs> these other kids that aren't mine on this long long international flight it was fine but literally every time you know the kids had to use the bathroom and every time they were getting a meal the mom would like ask me to check i mean she wouldn't ask me but she was obviously trying to get their attention so i would you know be the intermediary it was just an interesting plane interaction it was fine it ended up being okay i think she you know obviously i'm a mother i'm a woman i think she wouldn't have done it if it were a, a man traveling alone i'm glad that i let her feel safe and i'm using the charlotte tilbury something shadow stick or something it was okay i anticipated just being asleep the whole time maybe getting up to use the bathroom a couple times but i was getting up a lot more frequently and then at the end she was very thankful she did thank me and you know, whatever. And it's just like, okay. I was getting a little annoyed maybe halfway through because like at one point she had fallen asleep. <laughs> I'm just literally responsible for the welfare of these kids that aren't mine. The thing is that wasn't even the worst international flight because at least she was nice about it. This is the Huda Beauty eyeliner. This is so good. It's so creamy. I think the worst flight I ever went on was I went to the Philippines Oh my gosh, like 15 years ago. I was young, I was 19 or 20. I flew to the Philippines with my mom, but then coming back, I was working. Um, I had to go back to work. That's when I worked for Louis Vuitton. And this flight went from, I think it was Korean Air, from Manila to Seoul, Korea, Incheon Airport. And then from Incheon Airport to JFK. First of all, I was so sick. Like I could feel myself getting sick the last couple of days I was in the Philippines and I was like, oh my gosh, this is not gonna be good for my flight home. When I got to the Manila airport, there was such a long delay. I don't know what was going on. It was a mechanical issue with Korean airlines. We were all waiting. So all these people who were waiting to get to Korea were getting pissed. I mean, I wasn't getting pissed, but, and I'll never forget this. It was a huge group of these, I guess they were like Korean businessmen. They were so mad. They were like, <laughs> demanding free blankets and drinks and they, they were just like bossing around these poor gate agents and so they did provide them with blankets and so they're sitting there in their blankets and like angry <laughs> in the chairs at the airport finally we get on the plane we get to korea however many hours later as soon as we land there was a table upon like as we were deboarding the plane there was a table with vouchers uh, hotel vouchers because our flight our outgoing flight was so late that we missed the connecting flight back to the states and they already knew that we all were going to miss our outgoing flights so they were waiting like there were no more flights that night out of Incheon airport or whatever back to the states so they had hotel vouchers waiting for us they had charter it was actually very nice like they had it ready for us keep in mind i was super sick I was traveling alone. I was like 19 or 20. It's the Korean airport. A lot of people don't speak English. And we took the charter bus to the hotel. And because I had such a tight timeline, I was working full time at LV at the time and I didn't have a lot of leave. So I had exactly like 11 days. I was set to arrive that morning or whatever it was like the night before. And then I was supposed to work the next day. My whole schedule got thrown off. And this was before, I don't know, like my cell phone didn't have international service. So from the hotel in Korea, I had to call my brother because by the time we landed, it was like whatever crazy time. I couldn't call work. I called my brother and I said, please call the store, like the actual Louis Vuitton store. Let them know that I'm not going to be able to come in this day. My I'm stuck in Korea overnight. I'll come in the very next day. And so he's like, okay. So he took the message down and he, I guess he called. It was fine. It was a very uneventful, restless sleep and the next morning as we're supposed to board the charter i was leaving like we're all leaving to get on the charter back to the airport the hotel receptionist lady ran after me and she's like oh ma'am ma'am or whatever your bill and i was like what bill this is supposed to be free it turned out 
because I was calling from the hotel phone, because again, I didn't have international service or whatever on my cell phone or like, I didn't even bring it because back then, whatever, I didn't have a phone. I had to use the, the hotel room phone. The bill for that one phone call from Korea to the States was 80 US dollars. I was so pissed. So I had to pay it. I paid it with a credit card. This is the Urban Decay Moon Dust eyeshadow in this really pretty duochrome shade Solstice. I'm just gonna put this on my eyelid. I had to pay this $80 phone bill. I was pissed, okay? I had to stuck in a hotel in Korea overnight, super sick, by myself, hungry, alone, scared, afraid, cold. <laughs> but then I made it and then I had to go to work the next day. This is the House Labs blush in this really pretty shade Fire Opal. It's like an iridescent coral-ish. Anyway, that was my annoying international flight story. It was weird. I guess it could have been worse. Anyway, so what was your worst flight story? I was on another flight coming back home from Miami. It was another delay and everyone was standing up. They had to do a head count. They counted everyone wrong. This one guy who was standing up was so pissed while the agent was like counting everyone in our seats. She told him to please have a seat because she was trying to count everyone and she needed an accurate count. They were asking every two minutes. They're like, please stay in your seat. Please stay seated so we can count everyone, get an accurate head count. He refused because he said he was tired. He wanted to stand up. She said, please sit down. And he said, you. And she was like, oh. So TSA kicked him off the plane. That was the first and only time I ever saw anyone kicked off a plane. But anyway, that's my makeup for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Get ready with me. What's your worst plane story? Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.